Okay, hi everyone. Welcome back. Welcome to the last session of uh, PEFM 2023. So this is the session of remote talks. So I guess it's fitting that uh, that you have a remote session chair. Uh, so the first talk in the session is going to be by uh, Joao Saraiva on uh, efficient embedding of strategic attribute grammars via memorization. Please go ahead, Joao. Okay, thank you. Uh, good night, everybody. Oh, good afternoon. Uh, so I'm, I'm presenting this work that was mainly uh, done by these uh, first two authors. They are two PhD students, Zeno Macedo and Manuel Rodrigues. And this is also joint work with Marcos Vieira from uh, uh, Montevideo in, in Uruguay. Uh, so oh, I have two screens. Let me see. OK, so I, I'm going to start introducing a, a motivating example. Let's, let's um, consider the let expressions that are common in any functional language. OK, so uh, on the left, we have a, a, an example of a let expression. And, uh, and on the right, uh, an abstract data type defining the, the, this, uh, this language. OK, um, and here we have, a, a, and a, it will be important to, in the next slides that in let, like in, in, in any language, you, the, the name analysis uses a kind of uh, use before declared a policy or, or, or semantics. Okay, and so in this data type, we have three that uh, in this uh, I was right that type we have three data types and with nine constructors. And now, uh, recently, there was a, a paper from uh, Eric Van Weyck, uh, where we defined these optimization rules, uh, very simple rules, additions, subtraction, negations. Um, and uh, we want to apply these uh, optimization rules to this language. Okay, that is the, the, the motivation of this example. And of course, we can write it e easily uh, as a recursive uh, function in, let's say, Haskell. Okay, and um, if we look at this code here, we have three functions one, let's say, per type uh, with 10 equations, and only one is interesting. Okay, is where we are. If you only look at the first rule of the optimization, that is an addition with zero. Okay, we just are concerning about the, the first rule only for the moment. Okay, and if you see this example, so the the traversal strategy is fixed. Okay, uh, it's type specific. We can't reuse the, the the traversal strategy, and of course, is coded with explicit recursion. Okay. Um, but this was a, a tiny, small example. But if we want, for instance, to eliminate, let's say, this smell in, in Haskell that testing if a list is, is empty uses the, this uh, equality in not, and not the library function null to test for this, uh, this uh, uh, the emptiness of a list, OK? And it's a known kind of smell in Haskell. And if you want to apply this transformation in Haskell, OK? Haskell uh, abstract syntax tree has 116 constructors across 30 data types. So if we consider to do it with a, a explicit recursion, uh, it will be a long function uh, with a lot of uh, recursion, uh, recursive calls. OK, and very boring to write, actually. And again, probably only in one of these constructors we are doing work, and the others, it's hard boring uh, things that we are doing. So um, this is the, 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 the motivation and uh, this is the, 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 perf the ideal scenario for strategic uh, uh, programming. So we can, for instance, write, and now we, we are concerning, considering only the first six rules, not seven one. Okay, and we can write this as a, 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 a a simple Haskell function, okay, where we have one equation per uh, rule, okay, and now we, what we can do is try is to use a strategic combinator in this case is innermost, okay, that navigates in the tree and applies the optimization rules, okay. So we use the innermost applied to this step, and this step is the composition of the default. Uh, behavior that is failing with the worker function that we saw uh, before that does the, the the transformation okay 
And so if we look at the code, we only wrote interesting equations and not the boring ones, okay? We just, all the seven equations we wrote are, ex or six in this case, are expressing the rules that we have to, to, to implement. Nothing else has to be defined, okay? And we will return to the, to smell, uh, to the Haskell smell elimination uh, problem later in, in the talk. So, and of course, we, this is a type preserving because we are transforming uh, uh, into, into uh, we are, the target is of the same type, but we can also produce results of a different type. And in this case, we have, we have a, a type unifying. So if you want to collect all the names defined in a let, okay, we produce a list of strings and uh, this is a type unifying. And in this case, we are using a strategy that is full top down. So this doesn't matter in this case if it's a full top down or full bottom up, but we have a plenty of combinators that traverse the tree. But again, we are only uh, concerned where in the nodes where uh, the names are introduced. And we, uh, we omit all the other uh, uh, nodes or constructors in our, in our language, okay? So this is, uh, what we have presented, actually, it's a well-known uh, work from uh, Ralph Lamann, Elios Wister, and Strafunski, uh, okay, that is the state-of-the-art strategic programming library for Haskell. So what is the problem? If, uh, if Strafunski can solve this, pro uh, this, this example, is the, 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 the rule number seven, where for when we have an ID, uh, 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 an introduction of, of a name, we, we want to expand it according to the environment, okay? And the problem is that uh, the strategic uh, uh, or Strafunski, the library can't uh, access uh, or can express this rule, okay? So, uh, in fact, the, the, the rule seven needs to compute the environment so that we can express express uh, the ID, and as just said, uh, we can't do it in in, in that in 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 a, in a near pure strategic uh, library. But so, but computing uh, scope rules, okay, are easily expressed by attribute grammars, and actually, this was the genius the genesis of uh, Knuth's attribute grammars work, okay. So we define this new formalism to be able to express scope rules. So this is the proper setting to express those scope rules or uh, to define how we can uh, compute that environment that we, later we can use in strategic uh, combinators. So this is what I'm going to show you. I'm not, I don't want to, in, in five minutes that you learn attribute grammar, so formalism, probably you don't, you are not familiar with it. But for instance, this is how we, Normally, we sketch a, a, a grammar visually with graphics. For instance, we if you, if you look at the top left, um, top left, oh, I'm, I think you can see my pointer. Uh, we say that the outermost environment is, is kind of context-free. So we start with, with an empty list of declarations, and we are accumulating uh, the total list of declarations that we pass down as the environment, okay? And if you look at the a nested, uh, a nested list, a nested let, the nested let inherits the, the, the environment of the outer one. So this is this rule here. Okay. Uh, and I, yeah, I think this is an important thing. So we have two attributes, DCLI, DCLO, to uh, accumulate the environment. And we have the, the, the environment that we pass down so that we can, uh, we can, uh, apply the optimization rule, okay? But attribute grammars actually are functional programs and we can uh, express directly these, these pictures as, as a Haskell program, okay? Uh, using a mechanism that I will introduce later. So if you if you look here, I don't, I don't want to show you details, but if you look to this equation in the root with, with the, for the DCLI, we start with an empty list of declarations Okay, and in the in the in the nested let the, the initial uh, list of declarations is the environment of the outer one of the parent. Okay, so this is really uh, expressing uh, the, the 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 picture I show you before 
in Haskell. And this is the full attribute grammar definition for this problem. Okay. So, uh, so I, as I said before, and we have okay uh, express this on top of uh, a, a zipper data structure. Okay, and we when we prefer and we pre and we we implemented an embedded of attribute grammars using zippers. Okay, but unfortunately, as I said before, Strafunsky can't assess the attributes uh, of the zippers because Strafunsky works on trees and not on zippers. So the solution is that we, we, we defined was to express strategic program, uh, programming in, with the zipper data structure. So um, let's just briefly say what is a zipper. A zipper is a tree together with some subtree that is the focus of, of attention. Okay, and during uh, computation, we can move this focus left, up, down, and right. Okay, so it's I'm going to just show you an example. So if I have a, a binary leaf tree uh, on, uh, and I wanted to focus my attention on this leaf two here, okay, I can say that the context of leaf two is this tree here. Okay, and th this can this context can be uh, expressed by this path right, turning right and left in the tree. Okay, so let's go quick here. So I can define a data type for defining context and locations in the tree, and I can express functions to navigate in the binary leaf tree. Let's say left, right, parent. Okay, and now I and I can transform a tree into a zipper, and I can uh, transform uh, a, a zipper into a, a tree, and uh, and so I can now navigate in a leaf tree. Let's say if I want to go to the leaf two, I can go left, right, and I am in the leaf two, and I can perform some transformation like like to the, uh, subtract one to the value, and I have this tree. At the end, so zippers allow me uh, to move in in in, in, in uh, to navigate in any heter heterogeneous uh, algebraic data type. Okay, and of course we we don't want to this particular implementation for binary leaf trees. There are generic zippers in Haskell in other languages. Okay, and they all provide this this functionality to converting a data type into a zipper, converting a zipper into a data type, and moving up, left, down. Uh, right uh, and uh, and getting the, the the value that is uh, that we are in the node that we we have to focus our attention. Okay, so um, what we have done is that we um, a pure embedding of attribute grammars uh, with zippers uh, means that we are recomputing attribute values. What that's, this means that is not a proper embedding of the attribute grammar formalism because we are computing a lot of, 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 of values every time we call a function. So what we have done uh, is to uh, use memoization to avoid this recomputation so that we provide a proper embedding of attribute grammar. So we have a memo table where we, uh, we define we memoize the attribute values uh, of all the attributes in our in our language, okay. And our uh, functions now look very much uh, as before, okay. Um, with this memo uh, function that we use here uh, to memoize the the, uh, the attributes, okay. Uh, so. And what we have also now done is that now we have that to um, to adapt uh, our strategic uh, functions to work on memoized uh, uh, trees. Okay, uh, okay, they don't look as clean as before, but this is again uh, the implementation of the expression that is a type-specific transformation in a simple node. Okay, in the in the, in the expression node. Okay, so those are the first six rules, very much as before. Okay, and now we can finally implement the seven rule where we can expand. We we compute to access here the environment. This is an attribute. Okay, uh, and we expand the this the name of this variable uh, according to the environment e. 
okay and so we apply actually the, the seven rule so this is the uh, the full I, I showed in these slides the full implementation of this uh, of this example the full attribute grammar and the full strategic program uh, to do to uh, to apply the optimization the seven optimization rules um so uh, this is the, okay so the before the, this is the type specific transformation in a single node and now we do again uh, a innermost traversal now uh, we have also to cons to be concerned with the memoization uh, uh, that we are doing in the tree but again the this function looks very much like what we had before um okay uh, we also did some optimization to avoid uh traversing uh, what we call in terms of attribute grammars terminal symbols that if you if you if you are familiar with grammars and parsers typical terminal symbols are not handled by the grammar but probably by a kind of a lexer where uh, they are handling a different mechanism with a let's say regular expressions finite automata and so on uh, um, so we we are doing the same we avoid traversing uh, strings and other uh, and other also the memorization tables that are stored in tree uh, and so on so this is uh, so we built a full uh, library uh, with all the the, the the popular strategic functions full top down once once button up the top top down innermost outermost folds and so on and um, okay and uh, we we apply this in again in um, in uh, in real examples so we wanted to 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 benchmark how efficient were our implementation the pure uh, imp uh, the pure embedding without memoization compared to the uh, to the uh, to the memoized one and also how we, we how we compare with the state of the art strafunci function that implements only strategic programming and with the Scala library, the uh, Kiyama library, that is a Scala library that implements combined strategic programming and um, and the attribute grammars. So this is the full implementation actually of the list, uh, uh, this smell elimination actually in, be in the beginning. So, okay, this is the abstract, the constructors of the abstract syntax tree that is part of the ASCO library. So we need to know these constructors, these strange names here. But here we are doing the, the, this type specific work uh, function that uh, uh, performs one transformation in a particular node. Okay, and our smell elimination function is again an innermost strategy uh, that applies all these uh, these uh, smell eliminations. This is the join of a list, the null list, a redundant boolean and a, a, a redundant if, okay? And we apply this in, into real ASCII programs uh, uh, that were written by our first year students, okay? Uh, with, a, with a lot of code and we managed to eliminate 850 smells from the, 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 this, this, uh, these projects, okay? Uh, and this is the more or less the full implementation of our sm smell elimination, we don't we didn't we don't care about all other constructors that the that are part of the ASCO language. Okay, um, in terms of performance, um, here we compare our uh, only uh, uh, the strategic programming. So uh, this this the ASCO smell eliminator doesn't use attributes. So we we can see that. Uh, Strafunsky here on the left uh, is runtime, on the right is memory usage. But in the left, we can see that Strafunsky is the fastest. Very, we are very close uh, with the strategic uh, uh, library. Okay, this where we uh, avoid traverse, uh, traversing terminals, and the the the, the, the non-optimized version of our library. Uh, it's probably two times slower. Um, but we compare our uh, implementation with uh, Kiyama, where we combine strategic programming, 
memoization and, uh, and attribute grammars. Uh, and Kiyama is the state-of-the-art library in, in, in this combined environment. And we can see that we are much faster uh, than Kiyama. So Kiyama is the green line that you see here. And we were very surprised with this result. Okay, uh, this is the strategic without memoization, uh, and this is the in in the the blue line is with memoization. Okay, so we are much faster than if we don't use memoization. Okay, this is the baseline of Kiyama. We wanted to understand just by constructing and destructing the tree, the Kiyama uh, has this behavior. Um, Finally, we also implemented um, um, complex optimal pretty printing uh, algorithm that is expressed in Edward Grammar. Actually, it was defined by my uh, PhD supervisor a long time ago. And uh, it's a complex and, uh, algorithm. Uh, uh, and we implement also try to understand what's going on between our implementation and the implementation and again, you can see here the results that uh, our implementation with memoi with memoization, okay, is much faster, of course, than our implementation without memoization. But surprisingly, Kiyama uh, stopped uh, uh, after three uh, uh, examples. Uh, uh, if, we, if okay, we we were increasing the the the, the, the size of the, the lets until uh, Kiyama uh, uh, couldn't uh, produce a result. Okay, so so uh, this is the conclusions of our, of our, our work. So we present an embedding of strategic programming, combined uh, strategic terminal writing with the attribute grammar formalism. Okay, so we, we extended actually the, 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 the expressiveness of, of uh, strategic programming. And we rely on memoized zippers. Uh, so attribute values are memoized in, in the zipper data structure so that we avoid free computation. And I have also to stress this, the algebraic data types and the zipper data structure are the single ingredients that we need to express this. So for instance, one of the authors, the second author in this paper, uh, just finished implementing everything we did in, uh, for instance, in Python. Python has an extension for algebraic data types as a library for zippers, and now we have a, a library for uh, strategic attribute grammars in Python. It was just implementing in, in Python what we have done in, in Haskell. We don't rely on lazy evaluation. In, 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 uh, the single ingredients are the zipper, data structure, and, and algebraic data types. And uh, okay, in terms of performance, that um, uh, we are very close to the, in terms of strategic programming, to the state of the art. Strakonsky library. Again, we are only comparing the, the ASCO version of, of the library. There are other implementations of strategic programming, Stratego, from the, well, from Ilko Visser. Uh, um, well. And, uh, and uh, we were very surprised with the result uh, the, uh, that uh, our, uh, that uh, provide our uh, Kiyama a library that we are much faster than, than, than this uh, established uh, library. So this is what I think I, I use most of my time. So all this code, all these libraries are available so you can download and, and run the examples yourself and, uh, and try with, with the, this code. So thank you and I, I'm happy to answer your questions. Okay, thank you. I don't know if clapping works in this remotely. Um, so um, I'm, I'm kind of relying on local people to see if there's any questions in the room. Uh, while, well, oh, I, I do see a hand has gone up, so I'll, I'll save my question. Uh, okay. um, Th thanks for the nice talk. Uh, um, have you thought about, have you tried deploying it as like a GitHub action so that you can, it runs on pull request to master? Or something like that. Is, is this something you've tried or, or is it just as a theoretical project that, that's been published now? Sorry, it's a very apl applied question. Yes, it's uh, we have it in, in GitHub as well and uh, it's um, some of libraries are, are available, yes. 
no, but uh, how easy it is for me to just stick in on my project, my Haskell project, so that when some random person uh, submits a pull request, it already eliminated all the code smells, and we can focus on the real record review. Is is, is what I'm asking. Uh, okay, no, 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 no the yeah, the, the the code smells. It was was a, a funny, uh, simple example just to test the performance of our library. It was it's not uh, a tool, an, a, any advanced tool that we wanted to to, to make public. Okay, it is a simple example, but actually it was. I have to say that I asked my student to do it, and took him less than half a day uh, to implement it, and it. Yeah, we tested with real, pro, real, real projects uh, developed by our first students, and that I, yeah, I, I, as usual, those are the smells that I'm always. Well, I, I just spend the weekend marking uh, Haskell exams, and I saw a lot of those smells in this year's students as well. I don't know if I asked your question. Sorry. I was actually wondering if I could use this to help with grading my Haskell coursework. <laughs> but um, yeah, anyway. let, let me say in, in the in the in the paper actually. Um, let me see. Uh, so this uh, the, uh, this repository of with, with this Haskell project it actually is available, and we publish uh, the, this. Uh, uh, we have a kind of uh, automated process uh, to mark student mm -hmm. projects where we use a quick check, it, uh, everything in, 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 that you can imagine to autom automate this process. And this is, if you look, I think it was published at ICFP three or four years ago. And, uh, and we, we, we took these projects from, from there. Actually, so they, 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 this is also available. Yeah. Okay. Do we have any other questions in the room? I, w one final thing I'm curious about is you've got this comparison with uh, Kiyama, which is really quite surprising, actually. To the results. I was wondering to what extent that is because Kiyama is a Scala comparing with your Haskell implementation. Is it is it that it has vastly different problems to tackle or is it related to that that's a that's a good question uh, so first our kiyama implementation is correct so because we asked the main author of the kiyama library tony sloan from Macquarie university to because we didn't we didn't we we're surprised so i said okay i'm sure that our implementation kiyama we are not experts in scala uh, my student is not a it was, I think, the first time he wrote a Scala pro pro program. So we asked uh, Tony to see, is this implementation of this light optimization with that programmers OK in Kiam? And he said, yes, it's it's OK. So I think what they do is uh, it's Scala is faster than Haskell. Um, so um, I don't know. I know that they use relations the, the, to combine attribute grammars with strategic programming. They instead of uh, together with abstract syntax tree, they use some relations. They use graphs. I see they use kind of um, um, complex data structures to uh, to combine when the, the the abstract syntax tree changes after a. a, 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 a a strategy is applied that can influence attribute to values. So I think they use a more complex data structure. And uh, but to be honest, Tony Sloan was not that surprised that his implementation was slow. So I think he was aware that his implementation was was slow. And I think we, we were the first doing a proper benchmark of his tool um, outside his group. Um, I think. Okay, well, um, looks like we're out of time. So uh, let's thank Joe again for a very interesting talk.